It is March, or as I like to think of it, Vic Schaefer time. Coach joins us talking all about Texas and their march to the Sweet 16 and beyond. Locked on women's basketball starts now. Ogumba Wallet for the win. You are locked on women's basketball. Your daily podcast on women's basketball. Well, hi, everyone, and welcome to Locked On Women's Basketball. I'm your host, Howard Magdal. I want to thank you for making us your first listen every day. You guys keep showing up for us the way we show up for you. Over 180,000 of you in February. We are going to shatter that mark here in March, of course, because it is the most magical time of year. Go ahead and subscribe here at YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. And it is not just me. It is the incredible crew over at The Next, where we have had over 100 reported pieces about women's basketball every month. We are fanning out across the country to Portland and Albany this weekend. $9 a month, $72 a year, thenexthoops.com. Come join us and be part of this movement. And goodness knows we have a lot of stories generated by my guest today and his program, Vic Schaefer, Texas lost Rory Harmon. I know this is not news to you. To any of our listeners who may not be aware, lose arguably the best point guard in the country. You've made that argument, and it's a persuasive one. For you to turn around, have 32 wins already, a number one seed going into the Sweet 16. You talked to me earlier this year about figuring it out. Did you think it was possible to figure it out to this ceiling? You know, with this group of kids, uh, I knew anything was possible, and I knew they deserved our best effort. And uh, I thought my—I think my staff and I, we, along with the good Lord, I mean, uh, I've said this a lot, Howard. I'm a fleshy guy, and on December 27th, when that happened, it was so devastating to lose, uh, you know, what I think was the best two-way guard in the country not just point guard. She guards better than anybody in the country. She picks you up 94 feet. She runs your team. Um, she was like seven or eight to one in assist to turnover ratio at the time. Um, and so when you lose somebody of that magnitude, not to mention a kid of incredible character, um, you know, it can go one of two ways. It really, there's no in between in my mind. And, uh, to see how this is is um, turned out is is quite remarkable. I'm so proud of this group. I don't think anybody in the country, uh, including you, <laughs> probably thought that we'd be 32 and four and we'd win the Big 12 tournament championship and be a number one seed in the NCAA tournament when Rory went down. But it, it just speaks to the again. It speaks to the character of our kids, to the work ethic of my staff. And um, you just never want to underestimate what's inside somebody's breastplate. I will, in my defense, <laughs> say that it would be crazy to count out Vic Schaefer in Texas after well, all. Thank you. Out. But to be fair, I, I mean, to lose somebody of that caliber required a couple of things. It required you and your staff to come up with a plan B on the fly, and it required specifically Madison Booker to step up the way that she has. Now, I remember a conversation yeah. with you last summer where you talked about it's not just that she's going to start for me right away. She's going to be special for us right away. Asking her to change paths mid-year like this and learn, when do you think it clicked? And I'm just to give our listeners some context. Early on, she had a game with seven turnovers. As she's learning how to play the point, you go back and you look, game in and game out ever since, it's two, it's one, it's zero. It's rarely more than that. What? How did she do it? I mean, I guess it's kind of the biggest way to, to start. Yeah. You know, uh, she – and this is, again, no disrespect to anybody else across the country. But this is a freshman that 
typically when you have a point guard, you might move your two guard over there. Right. You know, she's our small forward. She's our three player that we're moving into that role. And, um, but again, we didn't have tryouts, Howard. Like I knew that's where we were headed. I knew we, I was going to her come hell or high water. That's who's going to be our point guard. There wasn't a big conversation or what do you think, or who do you want to try? I knew who could do it. Now, again, this is what makes her different than these other freshmen across the country. She got a three day crash course. Mm -hmm. Rory goes down the 27th. We open conference play on the 30th. And yeah, it was rough early, but as many as she might be having a few turnovers here and there early, she was obviously making a bunch of plays. Yeah. And um, what she's learned, and it's going to really help her down the line playing for me when she gets back to the wing, is that I don't like turnovers. And you can't turn the ball over. Right. You got to take care of the ball. And I'm not interested in 50 50s. I don't care if two out of 10 make it. I'm worried about the eight that don't. And I think she's really learned to embrace that. And um, the thing is, the kid's so humble. She's got humility, something that so many young kids today ain't got. They just don't have it. But that's a credit to her mama and her daddy and the aunties and the and the grandmas that have raised that kid. She is so down to earth, humble, and just wants to get better. And she's in after every game, wanting to watch film, the good, the bad, and the ugly. She wants to see it all. She's accountable. I mean, she's really, in my mind, she's a little bit of a throwback. Hmm. You know, because yeah. kids today, I don't want to see the bad and the ugly now, you know. And and so I just think that's what makes her so unique and special. And it's why her team loves her. She's a great teammate. Uh, she is unselfish to a fault. Uh, there's times she turns down shots and I have to tell her, hey, why would you turn that shot down? You know, but she enjoys the pass and the assist as much as she enjoys you know, making a bucket and I need her to make buckets. And she's good at all of it for you. I, I, I mean, you know, I'm a stat nerd. And so I go in and see your teams are always good at protecting the ball. You're 26th in the country in turnover percentage this year, despite having to make this change, which means, you know, it is filtering down throughout. But the biggest thing for me above and beyond just, again, taking over the reins and doing it the way she has and I will just say parenthetically, 14 assists in that first round game yeah. against Dretzel. So that, that was just fun to see. You know, it just yeah. felt like a reward. But she is somebody as a freshman who is so elite. She is north of 71% finishing at the rim to be able to do that right away. She has a mid-range shot. And you talked about this when we talked about her for the first time last year. This three-level scorer right away. Yeah, you get the benefit of that for the next three years. But have you thought at all about what this means for her when she's finished playing for you four years from now? Because players are not built like that with that skill set that young to head to the WNBA at all. Well, and the other thing is she's got the pro body. You right. know, I mean, she's she's already got that frame. And, uh, you know, you talk about the 14 assists she had the other night. We win the Big 12 championship, and she had 25. She's MVP of the deal, whole nine yards. She comes to me, hey, coach, how many turnovers do I have? <laughs> she had zero, right? you know, in that game. She was more proud of the lesser stat, you know, than anything uh, because she knows the importance of taking care of the ball. And, uh, you know, that's, again, that's growth. You know, that's that's maturity. And so it's been fun, man. I've, I've had a front row seat with this team. And uh, I tell you, they're they're really special. They're really a special group. It's it's one of my more, if not the most amazing team I've ever had. It's one of the top three just because of 
the adversity we've had, the injuries we've had with Taylor and Deanna and 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 uh, Rory. It's really an incredible group. It, and the story is still being written. And as you said, there are many more players who we're going to get into here in segment two. Madison Booker, we could talk about her all day, but it's important that we get a full sense of this team. So back in segment two with Vic Schaefer to talk about more of the Texas Longhorns, your number one seed, heading into Friday against Gonzaga. Howard Magdal locked on women's basketball back after this. Here to talk to you guys about eBay Motors, one of our sponsors today, and passion, drive, and patience. What bring home the winning trophy is also what keeps your car alive eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. And they have over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die. So you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. eBay Guaranteed Fit means you're going to look for that little green check mark. Your part is guaranteed, if it has it, to fit your ride every time or your money back. With all the parts you need at all the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available to U.S. customers. So back here with Vic Schaefer and Vic, you talked about before the break about this being one of your favorite, one of the most special teams that you've had. I look at this team and I just need to mention again, we've had you on the show before and we've talked about it. This is an elite two-way team the way I can't tell what those teams are, but those Mississippi state teams, the final four teams were you, you get credit for your defense. I don't know that you get the credit for your offense the way we ought to have here. And so I'm just going to point out points per 100. You guys are fourth in the country. Yeah, you're seventh in, your, in the country in opposing points per possession. But this group is doing it both ways. I don't yeah. think you could do it without what a Liam Moore has become for you as a consistent scorer. Take me through what it has meant, not just to see Aaliyah out on the floor, because I know she's battling, but to be, I, I believe it's seven games in a row, double figures for you. Yeah. No, and, and you know, Howard, I had to go through the same thing with her last year, you know, losing her. It's just, yeah. you feel for the kid, you feel for the family. You know, she's got such a great mom and grandma, and uh, it's just, your your heart just goes out to those kids. And she sat there and watched us win a championship last year and then watched us get upset in the second round. And she's going to make sure that didn't happen this year. And uh, she has been nothing short of spectacular. I mean, she is a tough matchup for people at the four. And uh, I think what I, I'm most proud of her and excited about is She's really turned into an elite defender. Um, what people don't know is that the kid battles, you know, she's still, her repaired knee is fine, but in a lot of these cases, it's the other limb that ends up suffering while you're getting the other one healthy. And in, this, in her case, it's no different. She's got tendonitis in her other knee and she's constantly having to get treatment and, and uh, being taken care of for that. And yet, she just battles and battles and battles through that. And, um, you know, she's had to come out of games with tears in her eyes, like, Coach, just give me a minute, you know. But the kid's an elite – number one, she's an elite kid, an unbelievable young lady. Mm -hmm. But, two, she's really – she's turned into a heck of a player for us, and she's she's catching her win now at the right time. And uh, she's just doing a, a great job for us. And like you said, I think the last seven games, she's – if she hadn't been a double double, she's been close, but she's scoring in double figures, and uh, she's just a really tough matchup offensively. She's got a lot of skill set, she's a big physical kid, and then defensively, she's just really gotten better. She also is stretching the floor for you now, made her first three against <laughs> Alabama. Oh, Lordy, she says it's in her bag, she says it's yeah. there. 
Yeah. You know, I see her out there uh, practicing those every now and then. I have to walk over to her and go, uh, hey, we'll work on that this summer. And uh, she was fired up to remind me after the one the other night, <laughs> you know, hey, I told you I've been practicing those. I'm like, yeah, okay. <laughs> it, it was, it, to me, and and having, you know, having the knowledge of just how much she's been going through, seemed like a kid at peace with herself and comfortable on the floor more than, you know, I assume you're probably not going to remake the offense around her shooting from three, but just in general, yeah. seeing her in that moment, is that your read of it that, you know, here, here's somebody who's found her place. Yeah, I think you're exactly right. I think she's really comfortable right now um, in what she, you know, she knows I want her to do. And um, I think she's really good at doing it. And uh, I got to keep getting her in position and putting her in positions where she can really be successful. But I do think she's comfortable. I think she's having fun. Um, she's glad that she's out there in the middle of the fight now instead of having to sit on the side and watch. Kid's an incredible competitor. Um, and so, you know, again, Howard, you, you only get one college career. Mm -hmm. And you, you just don't want to take these, these times for granted. You know, I, I think we're going to be playing every year on March 26th. I mean, if I'm doing my job, we're playing into April every year, which we've done quite a bit. But there's no guarantees. Just like, I, you know, you, we were talking about, I mean, you have injuries, um, you know, things that happen all the time that keep you from doing that. And um, But it's March 26th. We're going to practice today. Um we're going to play on the 29th or 30th, you know, in our first in our sweet 16. So you got to embrace the moment. Nobody's 100 percent this time of year. Nobody, including the coaches. <laughs> but you, you've you got to man, you got to, if you can I told somebody this today, if you can eat, breathe, sleep, you know, you, you can function. You're good. Let's go, you know, and uh I think uh, I just think you you just don't want to take this time of year for granted because there's no guarantee. We think it's going to happen. It typically does, but you just don't know. So there's no guarantee. So embrace the moment. Live the moment right now. You're a number one seed. Live it. Everything you do right now, live being the number one seed. And I thought our kids did that really well over the weekend. We beat a heck of an Alabama team. Yeah. Like I don't. I don't know how they were the eighth seed coming out of the SEC, knowing who they'd beaten during the year and finishing fourth in that league. Like, they were really good. Like, I didn't sleep for a number of nights. Christie's a hell of a coach. Um, so, we beat a really good team. And, you know, I thought we played pretty well. No doubt. And, and to me, what's so interesting, you talked about the difference in depth post game the depth that this team has. So this team, you can go and get two for 12 out of Shea Holly and, and Shayla Gonzalez, and you're still going to beat a really good SEC team. You find enough other ways to win. Yep. Just as notable to me, neither one of them comes off the floor. They're playing the full 40 for you. That to me strikes me as a full measure of your level of confidence in them and what they do. Bottom line, are you looking for more out of them this weekend against Gonzaga? And if you advance, obviously, in the Elite Eight as well? Well, again, I, I think it's a credit to them, Howard, because, okay, they're going two for 12, but they're helping me win in another way. You know, both of those kids have become elite defenders. And the key word there is become because they wanted to. I mean, Shaley – was an elite scorer at BYU. She came to Texas because she wanted to add to her game. Shay Holly has become the glue to my team. Those kids are so unselfish. I mean, they just want to win. And you know, as a coach, we get to looking at the portal and we get to see all these kids that are averaging this and they do this. This team has really opened my eyes to a different way of winning. Hmm. And I think you have to really value 
the way this team has done it. Like I said, they've shown me a different way. Uh, but yet we really haven't changed our style. Yeah. But they've proven to me that they can still do it our way, even though we might not, you know, be quite as quick or quite as athletic. But we are so smart. We have an incredible competitive spirit. But we have unselfish kids. And I think that's what I'm getting to with the portal. There's a lot of kids in the portal right now, and we do our homework. But we're not going to take a kid. I don't care how many points they're scoring. Mm -hmm. If we do our homework and three or four people tell us, hey, all they care about is points. They don't care about winning or losing. I'm not going to bang my head in the wall for three years trying to teach them how to be a good teammate. Not doing it. Because I don't have anybody here at Texas right now that's like that. And I owe it to these kids to put kids around them that are like-minded because you know what? Those kinds of kids are winning. It's a Vic Schaefer team, and it's always fascinating to me to see how that happens. I'm going to be back with you, talk a little bit about the matchup on Friday here in segment three in just a minute. But first, I want to talk to you guys about sponsor today, and that is Fire TV. Now, do you guys know how Fire TV works? It's your destination for sports from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. It's real easy. I, I like the Fire TV stick. It's something so easy to use that even my parents use. They just grab it. You pop it into one of those HDMIs in the back of your TV. And then suddenly you got access to an incredible world of movies, TV episodes, and of course, live sports college basketball, baseball, you name it, WNBA this summer, you want to see the games on Prime, you'd use Fire TV to do it. Fire TV now has their own Fire TV channels, which include, by the way, all of us at Locked On, along with most of the pro sports leagues as well. So if you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this. To learn more, visit Amazon.com slash Locked On Fire TV. Lockdown Women's Basketball, also brought to you by Nissan. I want you guys to understand, the Nissan Rogue, it'll get you through the city. It'll take you on great escapes. You have Google Assistant, Google Maps, and a Google Play Store, all built into a 12.3-inch HD touchscreen infotainment system. But let's say you got a bigger crew. Nissan Pathfinder is there for you. Room up to eight, an expansive cargo capacity, 284 Horsepower. So the Pathfinder can take you on those adventures as well. And if you want to go really big time, 2024 Nissan Armada, a full size SUV, four by four, can seat up to eight in first class luxury and style, tow bigger and explore further in the 2024 Armada. Go try any of these for a test drive at your local Nissan dealership and shop NissanUSA.com to learn more. Back here with Vic Schaefer. Vic, we're talking about Gonzaga, a team that is second in the country in points per possession. Obviously, uh, Lisa Fortier's team had a terrific year. I'm sure they're the ones keeping you up nights right now. What are you seeing? What is the most important thing you got to stop in order to emerge victorious on Friday night? Well, obviously, they shoot the three a lot and make it a whole lot um you know as a team making 40 40 percent they got four kids that are shooting over 33 um one of them's making it 51 percent um just off the chart 51 46 42 and 33 um look if we played horse against this team it'd be over in a hurry um <laughs> This group is so well coached. Lisa does a great job. Um, and they're all veterans. They're either seniors or graduates. I mean, they're just, they've been to the wars. They know what it's all about. Uh, it's going to be a home game for them. You know, um, I've had to do this before back in 2010 at, uh, at A&M when we went up there. We had to play Kelly's uh, team from Gonzaga up there in the exact same scenario. And, uh, I'm supposed to be the higher seed and I get thrown on the road again. Every time I go to Portland, Howard, I'm the high, I'm the one seed having to play the low, the, the higher seed, you know, the, 
the two seed and, and it was when I was at Mississippi State, I was the one seed, had to go play Oregon, the two seed up there. Now I'm having to go play the four seed. I can't ever get a break. How about having somebody come down to Dallas <laughs> or something and play me in the NCAA tournament down here? Be all right from a media perspective. Yeah. So anyway, it, it it is what it is. And so now I'm going to have to go play on the road again. But this team's been great. I'm talking about mine has been great on the road all year. We just played in the Big 12 tournament, played three road games in, in Kansas City against Kansas, K-State, and Iowa State. So we'll be ready. But uh, those, uh, you know, Gonzaga's obviously playing well. They've had a heck of a year. Um, beat Stanford earlier in the year, beat Alabama earlier in the year. So, I mean, when you look at them and they've won, they've, they've lost, what, three games total? Yep. Yeah. So, you know, we're going to have to play well. There's no doubt about it. But I've been watching this team of mine for a while now. I'm not trading them for anybody's. And I got a lot of confidence in them. And uh, I couldn't be more proud of them. They'll come to work today. And uh, they'll have their lunch pails and their hard hats, and they'll say, hey, "Coach, let's go. Who we well, got next? How are we going to beat them?" And that's that's just how they've been all year. And again, I and our listeners need to keep it in mind: this is a Vic Schaefer team. This is how your teams play. I've covered you for quite a long time. You hit 400 career victories as a head coach, 100 at Texas. This team, 32 wins as well. And if I may say so, on my USBWA ballot, you are on there for Coach of the Year as well. It's remarkable what you continue to do. I congratulate you on all of it. Uh, to our listeners, I thank you for joining us, as you always do. We will be back with you tomorrow and, of course, continuing six days a week while we fan out all over the country and cover March Madness for you. Until then, I am Howard Magdal, wishing all of you a wonderful Wednesday. Ogumba Wallet for the win! You are Locked On Women's Basketball. Your daily podcast on women's basketball.